editing a critical component of the filmmaking process. That requires attention to detail, patience, and a willingness to achieve the desired result. Editing allows to take raw footage and transform it into a polished, professional-looking final product. And a well-edited film can make all the difference in how it is received by audiences. That's why editing is a time-consuming task. So in this video I'm gonna tell you, 10 most important techniques and strategies, that can help you to speed up the editing workflow and improve efficiency. If your video editing PC doesn't have enough hardware, it's going to be slow, regardless of anything else. So always try to use the proper hardware, to speed up your editing performance. So first one is the CPU. That's mean central processing unit. CPU is the most important component of your computer for video editing. And we always have a battle that is never ended. Which one is better for video editing, Intel or AMD? Best CPU for video editing actually depends, what you will be doing in your budget. For overall best budget and performance you can go with AMD Ryzen series. Make sure the clock speeds of 4 GHz or higher. And always try to look for a faster clock speed, between 4 to 10 cores depending on your budget. RAM depend on exactly what you are doing, but we do have a general guideline, depending on the different resolutions you work with. Third one is GPU. In addition to the raw power of your GPU, it is essential that your video card has enough memory for your projects. This can change based on the length and complexity of your sequence, but in general Adobe recommend having at least the following amounts of VRAM, depending on the resolution of your sequence. While the GPU isn't used much, if you have just a plain clip with no effects, these effects that support GPU acceleration. Last one is the storage. Which one is better for video editing? SSD or HDD? SSD drive is always best for a video editor, SSD is expensive more than HDD. But SSD is fast and it will boost your video editing, rendering and playback performance. Always try to use two SSD storage. One for the operating system, another one for caching and media files. And these PC components are most effectively used to speed up your video editing performance. Use a large monitor. Large monitor give you a bigger working screen space. Having more space means, you can use multiple applications at the same time and editing will be enjoyable when you have more space to your monitor. Now I'm going to talk about a crazy monitor from LG. This is 28 inches LG dual up monitor. It's a vertical designed monitor 16 by 18. This monitor comes with a ergo stand. And I absolutely love this stand. It's allow me to use horizontally and vertically. And the monitor has the ton of ports in the back for you to use it. And there is a little joystick at the bottom of this monitor to control the setting of this monitor. Also, you can customize the window by using the LG on-screen control app. This monitor is designed for multitasking with two landscape windows. This monitor aspect ratio is 1618 and the resolution is 2560 by 2880. If you are a video editor, you can use the topper part for the preview window and the bottom part for the timeline and other tools. And I love to editing my photos on this monitor. Designer and web developers have a lot of fun with this monitor, since the aspect ratio fits that type of work perfectly. And I really enjoyed web browsing and watching reels on this monitor. It is built in speaker, and this is the sound quality of the speaker. It's going to cut to me lighting this candle. The next cut is a J cut. A J cut is another classic technique where the audio from the next clip overlaps with the video from the previous clip. In my case, I'm using this one for my secondary monitor. Using this as a second monitor for my editing, it's absolutely amazing. So I can use it preview window for my vertical videos. For a content creator I think it's a game changer as a secondary monitor. You can check out this monitor under the description link. Pre-planning an organization is very important for a solo content creator. The first step in successful content creator is getting your script ready. A little preparation can go a long way to ensuring, your next video project is a success. For example video shooting ideas, how can you edit the video? Which clips will go one after another in the sequence? What type music are you going to use? So when you start, you don't have to think about your shooting and editing, and this little thing will save your tons of time. Make your own assets library, for example, LUTs, music, sound effects, overlays, stock footages, presets, transitions, and etc. Maybe this will take some time to organize your files. 
But trust me this is a big way to save your time. So when I work on a project, mark all of these assets I need for this project. And just drag all of them on the project panel. Then I use the search bar to find individual file that I'm looking for. So spend some times to organize your files. And make your own assets library. So what is proxies? If you are trying to edit something larger than 1080p, but your PC or laptop is very slow to handle it. So easily you can create a proxy file, then proxies will make your larger videos to smaller size, and you can edit them smoothly. But when you render it, you'll get the original resolution, same as your video footages. Now let's see how to create proxies in Premiere Pro. As you can see here, I'm using 8K resolution footage, and 30 frame rate per second. And I'm using an adjustment layer for color grade. And one graphic layer for the text line. But when I'm trying to play it, as we can see it's lacking and it's not playing properly. Now let's create proxy file. So select your all of the footages, then right click on it. Select proxy, and create proxies. Under the Format option, select QuickTime. In the Preset option, select the Cineform Low Resolution Proxy. And it's available for Mac and Windows. Then enable the Add Watermark. So when we are editing with proxies, this will show a proxy watermark to the program window. In the Destination, select the Next to Original Media. Then click on OK. And it will open up the Media Encoder, to encoding the high resolution footage to low resolution and this will take few moments to encoding our clips. When it's done, going back to the Premiere Pro. And we can see there is a little proxy icon in this clip, but this icon is white color, that's mean proxy is not enabled yet. Now let's enable the proxy. Under the program window, click on the little plus icon. Now select the toggle proxies icon, then drag and drop it here. And click on OK. Now just click on this toggle proxies icon to enable the proxy and you'll see this proxy icon in the program window. And when we enable the proxy, these icons will be blue color. Now let's play this footage. As we can see it's playing smoothly. And doesn't matter your PC or laptop is low configuration, we can easily edit any high resolution footages inside the Premiere Pro. And when we are going to render it. As we can see this will render with the original resolution of my footage. If you are on a newer Sony camera, like the a7 III, a7 IV, or any of the newer cameras that have the proxy menu system. To enable this feature, click on the menu button, go to the video settings, then go to proxy settings. And here turn on the proxy recording. And set the proxy file format to EXA VCS HD. So this will record a new 720p proxy file, and honestly this will save a lot of time. Create your own custom presets within your video editing software, and purchase pre-made presets from online marketplaces or individual creators. And this will save your time for a longer period. Now let's see how to save your color presets. And I color grade my S-Log3 footage in this adjustment layer. Here I just changes some basic corrections. And a little bit curves adjustment. Now I'm gonna save this as a preset. So right side of the Lumetri color, click on these three line. Then select Save Preset and type a preset name here. And click on OK. Now go to the Effects tab, and search the name of your preset. Now let's try this preset. So I'm gonna hide this one, then add one more adjustment layer. Then just apply your preset on this adjustment layer. And that's all. There's another way to create your own LUT. So you have to select the export.cube. Then select a folder where you want to export it. And type a name here. Then click on save. To use this LUT preset. Let's hide this one, then again we need add an adjustment layer. Then select this adjustment layer, and move over to the Lumetri color tab. Click on the creative panel. Select none to browse. And open your exported cube file. And that's all. Now here you can adjust the intensity of this preset. So now you don't need to color grade every footage of the same profile. And it will save you a lot of time. Also, you can purchase my 15 cinematic LUT presets for your next project. Sometimes it is good to invest in something, which will save you a lot of time for a longer period.
Now let's see how to save the text effect as a preset. To create this effects I have used 3 presets for 5 times. But I don't want to do it again, I need to save them as a preset. So select all of the effects by clicking on the shit button. Then right click on it, select save preset. And type a preset name here. Then click on OK. Now you'll find it to the effects tab. So let's delete this text layer. Move the the time indicator to the first frame and type another text line to the program window. Then make it center by using the align tool. Now just apply your preset to this text layer. And that's all. And you can download this presets pack under the description link. And these presets are pretty easy to use, just drag and drop. Also, you can change the text color and font. Now I'm going to talk about 6 custom keyboard shortcuts, QWE, and ASD. And these shortcuts save me a lot of time. Use W, to make a cut. Q, for ripple trim previous part. E, for ripple trim next part. A, for zoom out the sequence. D, for zoom in the sequence. And S, for ripple delete. It doesn't matter which software are you using for edit videos. If it's allowed to customize the keyboard shortcut, just change it instead. Inside the Premiere Pro, if you want to cut a sequence, you need to select the razor tool, then click where you want to cut. And it takes too much time. For the default keyboard shortcut, you have to click Ctrl plus K. And it's feel like my finger is stretching. To customize the shortcut, click on Ctrl plus Alt plus K, to open the keyboard shortcut settings. Then search here at Edit, as you can see that I've already customized the add edit shortcut to W. So first you need to remove the default shortcut. Just click on the little cross icon to delete it. Then again click here, and press the W button on your keyboard. And that's it. For the ripple trim next edit to playhead, change the shortcut to E. And ripple trim previous edit to playhead, change the shortcut to Q. For zoom in the sequence, change the shortcut to D. And zoom out the sequence, change it to A. And the last one ripple delete, change this shortcut to, S. Now click on OK, and there we go. Maybe first you'll feel a little bit uncomfortable, but when you get used to it, honestly this will save you a lot of time. Get a high quality and productive mouse, a high quality mouse with programmable buttons can help to speed up the editing process, by allowing you to program frequently used commands and shortcuts. This can help you to minimize the time spent clicking through menus and options. You can customize the button as your need, also you can add specific program to customize it. So this will help you for multitasking and speed up your editing workflow. And video editing can be a time-consuming and demanding task, so having a comfortable and ergonomic mouse can help to reduce strain and fatigue on your hands and wrists. Divide the editing work into clear steps or tasks, and use a assembly line method. For example, first import your footages to the timeline, then adding voiceovers, adding background music, color the footages and add graphics elements. And last add the sound effects. Then set clear deadlines and checkpoints for each step. And the last important thing is to increase your editing speed, remove everything that distracting you. For example, put your phone on silent mode, turn off all social media notifications, because you have to focus properly on the project you are working on.